It's great to be with you. It's really quite an honour to be at the 2021 Melbourne Big Day In event. Out of all the Big Day In events that I've done over Australia for the past, oh gosh, it's been about six years now since I've been involved in this, this wonderful event, uh, both face-to-face -face and virtually, Melbourne is my favourite because it's my hometown. It's great to be working with Melburnians. I spent 23 years as a teacher in Melbourne and I've been at Adobe now as their education specialist for the last eight years. So do the maths. That's how old I am. <laughs> One of the many things I like about working in the IT industry is the diverse range of ages and life experiences of the people that I get to work with. In my team, we have interns who are still at university in their early 20s, and we even have, not many, but we even have some who are older than me. <laughs> and uh, we come from all sorts of academic backgrounds, like law degrees, business degrees, economic degrees, arts degrees, computer science degrees, some who have never actually been to university to get a formal qualification, but are really good with people and really good with technology and just love learning new skills. And then there's me. <laughs> and I was a primary teacher and a secondary school teacher and a university lecturer and even a school administrator at one point. So let me just, uh, I wanna find out a bit about you guys now. So I'm gonna bring up on the screen a QR code. And what I'd like you to do is with that QR code, I want you to scan it with your camera and I want you to do the, um, the range statements that are there. I want to find out about you guys. If you find it really hard to scan the QR codes, and let's face it, folks, we should all know how to scan QR codes these days. But if you do find that really difficult, you can go to www.minty.com and then put in the code 1072-9151, and that'll get you into the same location. Now, I'm just going to make sure that this poll is open and ready to go. It looks like it's ready to go. So I'm now waiting for some results to come in. They're starting to come in now. So I'm going to bring it across to the share screen and we'll have a look at these range statements and see the results as they're coming through. So the first statement is, I know what I want to do for a job in the future. In fact, I might just hide that a little bit so you can still see the QR code if you're struggling to access it at the moment. So there's a QR code again, and the link is minty.com. And I'll just move it on this side of the screen so you can see the code 10729151. So scan the code or just look up the website and 10729151 is the code. So we've got a few people who are brought in for it, or I'll have it there for another five seconds before we start really looking at the results. So another maybe four seconds to scan that QR code or type in minty.com and 10729151. All right, we're starting to get lots of results in now. So let's find out the results. First range statement, I want to, I know what I want to do for a job in the future. And we've got, oh, quite a range here. One person strongly agrees. Most of you are kind of in the middle there. No one strongly disagrees, so that's interesting. Learning IT skills at school will help me uh, with my future employment opportunities. And we've got four of you who strongly agree with that. The bulk of you kind of not sure at this stage. No one is strongly disagreeing, but three people are disagreeing with that statement. Interesting. I, I already earn money doing what I'm passionate about. And we've got 14 of you who've said, no, don't earn a cent about what I'm passionate about. Two of you who do. So I'm going to touch on the two of you in, in a few minutes to say why I think that is just brilliant. So three of you kind of do in that sense. I work well with a team. And we've got the bulk of you who strongly agree. And five of you at this stage out of the 26 who have done it, who are not sure. If you're still looking it up, the code is up the top there, minty.com. And then there's the code 10729151. I think I'm creative. Well, most of you think so. Two of you strongly disagree with that. I have a passion for coding. Well, there we go. There's an interesting, really interesting spread there. We've got four of you who strongly disagree with that and eight of you who disagree with that. 
And you've got three of you who strongly agree that you have a passion for coding and seven who agree and then eight are in the middle. Interesting. I have a passion for design. And we've got another good spread here with the bulk of you kind of agreeing that you have a passion for design. One of you who strongly disagrees. And then we've got, I'm encouraged to use Adobe applications at my school. And we've got a really interesting spread here with about eight of you who agree, five who strongly agree, seven who strongly disagree that they're encouraged to use Adobe applications at their school. All right, that's fantastic. Keep doing that poll. We may refer back to it again a little bit later if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to give your results in. But it really is interesting to find out a bit more about you guys and where you're at. During my eight years at Adobe, we've actually worked with some pretty amazing people who, who regularly use our software to be creative. Do you recognize this person? Well, I'll put the name up there so you should. With the release of Lady Gaga's sixth studio album, Adobe partnered with her to challenge digital artists to use their creativity to bring their own inner world of Chromatica to life. Digital artists were encouraged to use any of their favorite Adobe applications, such as Photoshop, Illustrator, Fresco. If you haven't come across Fresco, it's free. It's brilliant. Drawing and painting app. Fantastic on the iPad, iOS, but also on the Windows Surface tablets with the Microsoft um, stylus. It's really cool. Adobe Spark. If you haven't come across Spark yet, it's free. It's so cool. Spark.adobe.com. Look it up. It is just brilliant. We'll talk a bit more about that later. InDesign, a lot of you would know about that. So these were the applications that were mainly used to create representations of the Chromatica with the hashtag Lady Gaga X Adobe. Let's have a look at some of the results. This is some of the work out of the thousands of entries that came through. This is just some of the work that I just quickly grabbed from the Instagram site. Really cool stuff. And uh, when we have a look at the winner, the, the grand winner ended up getting, let's, here it is, this, is the, this was the winning entry, $10,000, American dollars, mind you, $10,000 cash they got to win, a high quality print of their artwork autographed by Lady Gaga herself, and also a 12 month Adobe All Apps Creative Cloud subscription, which is worth around about 1,000 Australian dollars. By the way, that's also the prize that we're giving out today for the best question in my Q&A section. So just be prepared for that. You might end up getting $1,000 worth of Adobe software for free, which is pretty cool. Now, Lady Gaga has worked really hard to have the success that she currently enjoys. When she was about your age, her name wasn't Lady Gaga. Imagine if it was. How would that have gone down at school? Lady, no, anyway, her name was actually Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanotta. And at your age, she sang at open mic nights and she acted in school plays and she just wanted to get lots of experience to help develop her passion for singing and acting. She described herself as very dedicated, very studious, very disciplined, but also insecure. She considered herself to be a bit of a misfit and was often teased and bullied when she was at school. She had to work really hard to develop her talent and her passion, and she went through some pretty difficult and disturbing experiences. She's a great example of a young person who worked out what her passion was and then turned that passion into a career. All right, it's time to play a little game. I want you to guess who is behind the blue shield here? So go to the q and I guess. Is that where we're going to be going for guessing or the chat? I'm not sure exactly where you're going for that. Probably the q and I'd say. Uh, and Calvin, you might have to help me out here as to who's going to be the winner when you see the answer. I think Calvin knows the answer. But as I start to reveal the shield here, I want you to guess who is behind the shield? So you can start seeing who it is. You're probably already working it out as we, as the shield is reducing. Kelvin, have we got an answer yet? Just trying to see, is there someone who has got yet. Have we got an answer? What's the answer? Not yet. Not yet. An yeah. Keep revealing. <laughs> have we got an answer yet? Normally someone's guessed it by now. I'll keep revealing. Oh my goodness. Are you seriously telling me we haven't got a response yet? 
Oh, thank you, Anonymous. <laughs> and Alex, Alex got it. Oh, I'm, I can see the Q&A now. Well done, Alex. You're the first one I saw. I'm not sure if um, uh, you were the actually the first one, but congratulations. We got there eventually. It's probably because you found it very hard to spell Eilish. But this is Billy. Billy Eilish. And of course, everyone knows who she is. She's another example of someone who's turned their passion into a job at a very young age. And we've been partnering with Billy. We've partnered with her for a few different projects. And the most recently, she's helped us with our latest Adobe Creative Cloud campaign aimed at encouraging everyone to be digitally creative and to create what's true to you. Let's have a look at this clip. For me, creativity starts with what ifs. Like, what if it takes place in a white void? Or maybe beige? No, black. What if there's fire? Did that already. What if there are some old cars? Or not. Let's see that in slow motion. Yeah, it's too much. What if it's in suburbia? Uh, that's not right. What about my look? Meh. Hmm. That's cool. What if it happens in the rain? Yeah, this is it. Now, create what's true to you. Very cool. Great working with her. She's uh, doing her most recent album, Everything's with Adobe. And just watch her video clips are just absolutely brilliant. Look at the makings of them too and just see how she's using our products to be incredibly creative. Billy and her brother Phineas both discovered they had a passion for songwriting and recording. They've both been very successful and they turned their passion into a job. One of the greatest pleasures I have in my job is to visit schools and universities around Australia and Southeast Asia and even, even into the USA to meet students who are really creative doing their schoolwork as well as turning their passions into a job. They're photographers, they're coders, they're video makers, they're graphic designers. They're not waiting until they've finished school or university to get a formal qualification. They're setting up their small businesses and their startup companies and doing school at the same time. They're turning their passion into a job. They're not waiting for school to finish. They're doing it now. Now, the skills that they're developing they're developing skills that they can use to thrive in the future. And what's interesting is we look at some of the research that's come out of the World Economic Forum about what are the skills that you should be developing as young people to thrive no matter what you do in the future. This research is amazing. Let's have a look at the top five according to this research. Coordinating with others, teamwork, collaboration, People management, again, related to coordinating with others, related to collaboration, working with a team. Creativity, number three in this, this is a 2016 study. Critical thinking and problem solving. How often are you developing these skills? How often are these skills a priority for you in what you do in the work that you're going through? These skills are commonly referred to as soft skills but I like to refer to them as vital skills because I think when you use the word soft skills, it can often undermine their importance. And more recently, this is just in 2019, the World Economic Forum linked up with Microsoft, Microsoft's LinkedIn, and they established what are the most important of the soft skills and time management came up, adaptability came up, collaborations there again, working with a team, persuasion. And look what's number one, according to this study, creativity. My goodness, such an important skill for you to be establishing and working through. Adobe was involved in a study last year that looked at 2 million job advertisements and 2 million resumes across 18 different careers, including the IT industry. And we found that skills like collaboration, communication and creativity are highly sought after by up to 70% of hiring managers, but only a fraction of the applicants actually featured 
those skills in their resumes or in their interview conversations. When you get a job interview situation happening for you, try to share your communication and your creativity skills. Note that in this particular scenario here, the resume has an image of the candidate on it. There, and there's some debate as to whether you should put your picture on a resume or not. I tend to think that not only should you put your picture on there, but you should also have a link to a video. And that's that's also a bit controversial, but um, if you can display the skills that you've got in a video through your resume, you're much more likely to actually get the interview. Whenever we see resumes coming through, if there's a link to a video, they're almost, almost very guaranteed to get into the top of the list for an interview. If it's just a boring resume, black and white, without any links or creativity to it, they're not likely to, to even be read, let alone get the interview. Have a look at this one that came past our desk in the States not so long ago. Hi, my name is Krista Timmerman, and this is my story. I'm a Jersey girl, born and raised by the shore. Growing up, I was a classically trained singer. When I was older, I loved the flashy New York life and the gritty rock scene of Asbury Park. After some street team activities for a local band, I began to see the big picture and I knew I wanted to work in the entertainment industry. In 2010, after graduating from Howell High School, I moved to Orlando, Florida to begin my degree at Full Sail University. At school, I studied entertainment business with my own personal focuses on branding and new media. I'm self-motivated and always eager to learn. Outside of the classroom, I garnered a real-world education going to pause that video there at that point and ask you to go to the chat just really quickly now. Tell me what applications were used to put that together. What applications do you think were used to put that together? And Kelvin's going to publish the ones as they're coming through and hopefully we'll get some responses here. So what applications were used to put Krista's video resume together? And Kelvin, if you can publish any responses that come through. Adobe Premiere Pro was, was used to actually stitch the whole thing together, absolutely. But what else was used? What else was used to make that video look absolutely amazing? Let's just get a couple more responses. Besides Premiere Pro, Photoshop was used to actually um, enhance the images to bring them in. I missed the last one there, Kelvin. I just saw Photoshop. Was there another one there? Give it maybe... 10 more seconds. iMovie, I don't think so. Not for this. It needs to be something a little bit more sophisticated than iMovie. Premiere Pro we've already mentioned. Photoshop's already been mentioned. Any other options there, folks? After Effects, well done, Anonymous. And Adobe Animate, I don't think was used in this case, but After Effects, definitely to get all those cool effects. Well done. So the question I have for you is how can you stand out from the crowd and show off your skills and your passions? And that's really worth considering because when it comes to branding yourself in a creative way, you need to develop some pretty cool skills. What's exciting is that the Adobe Creative Cloud, which includes all of those apps that you mentioned except for iMovie, uh, that's available in every Victorian Department of Education secondary school. Let me say that again. The Creative Cloud is available now for free in every Victorian Department of Education secondary school. No cost to the school. The government have already bought it for you. This is also the case in New South Wales. Every school in New South Wales that's owned by the government gets free access to the Creative Cloud. Both New South Wales and Victorian governments have seen the value in providing these tools for their students to give them the opportunities to develop important digital literacy, communication, and most importantly, creativity skills and allow their students to brand themselves with industry standard software and be better prepared for the future workforce. Most independent and Catholic schools have purchased access to the Adobe Creative Cloud for many of the students. So if you don't currently have a license yourself, see if you can get access from your IT support team. If that's too difficult, you can always start with the free Adobe Spark. Look up Adobe Spark or spark.adobe.com. So what is the Creative Cloud? I'm glad you asked that question. I like to call the Creative Cloud a digital makerspace for design, for collaboration, for problem solving, for communication, for creativity. And look at all the things that you can create 
with the Adobe Creative Cloud. It is 23 desktop laptop applications, 23 mobile applications, and 11 web apps and resources. I like to break the Creative Cloud into two different categories. You've got the low lift Creative Cloud apps, and you've got the powerful high impact apps. Low lift and high impact, powerful and high impact apps. And the powerful ones are used at the highest level of multimedia to create motion pictures through Hollywood, to create TV on Netflix, and, and most TV networks are using Premiere Pro these days to put together their television stories and so on. If you need any help with Adobe at all, go to helpx.adobe.com. That's the Adobe Help Center, helpx.adobe.com. It has beginner guides to full on advanced masterclasses on all of the Adobe Creative Cloud applications. If you're just getting started with the world of Adobe, check out Spark, it is so cool. Access it through spark.adobe.com. It's free for all schools. And if a school hasn't set up Spark yet, they should because there's no cost involved in setting up Spark. Just go to spark.adobe.com slash edu to find out more about how to get it free for your school. Teachers out there, if you're watching this, um, can I recommend the Adobe Creative Educator program to learn a bit more about this? But this is a program focused on the importance of creativity in education, as opposed to working with Adobe. And that's a really good thing. Students, let your teachers know about adobe.ly slash ACE. That's the Adobe Creative Educator program. And teachers also, we just hit one million teachers who have joined the Adobe Education Exchange, edX.adobe.com, to get resources and help and support in the world of Adobe. All right, folks, creativity is a fundamental skill for you to be developing, and I'm really looking forward to getting some questions. We have about just under five minutes to see what you have got to share with me for questions and potentially win $1,000 of Adobe software in the creative cloud. So thanks folks for listening to this presentation. I hope you've learned something from it and enjoyed it. And no matter what you do in the future, keep being creative. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Geraldine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tim. We have a few questions here for you. First question is, what's the best tip for a high school student with no work experience? Uh, look, just to keep developing your skills, as I was saying, even if you get the opportunity to get really good at, say, photography with Lightroom or Photoshop, then set up a little business. So you're taking photos for your friends' parties or you're taking photos for your relatives' weddings or big celebrations and just learning the art of being a photographer. Go to YouTube a lot and just learn your skills. If you're really into video, get get to learn Premiere Pro so you can develop those skills to become a good videographer or a, a cinematographer or uh, and maybe set up your own little business to, to make films for people. If you're really into uh, design, something like uh, Adobe XD is a great product to work with to help develop your skills in making mobile apps, apps for your phones and for your watches and your tablet devices. The more skills you can develop, the better you're gonna be in the future. Um, how hard is it to get used used to Adobe apps? Um, it depends. Like Spark is simple. Spark, you don't need any training or any advice. You can just pick it up. It's so intuitive to create posters, videos, and web pages with Adobe Spark. But when it comes to something like Premiere Pro, I've been using it for years and years and years, and I still haven't mastered it. It's something you just keep learning. It's 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 a long learning curve, but you can get started quickly. You just develop more and more skills, like being a surgeon. It takes years and years and years to become a, a good surgeon, but then years and years later, you're still learning your skills as you as you um, develop in your career. Yeah. Doesn't Premiere Pro require a good computer? Premiere Pro is requires at least eight gig of RAM, which is pretty much standard these days with most computers. Um, our high-end professional apps do require reasonably good processing speed and, and at least eight gig of RAM for sure. If you've only got four gig of RAM, you've got a really cheap computer, you're gonna be stuck with our, our, um, our apps that are much easier to use, our low lift, high impact apps like Spark. It's browser based. All you need is a browser to work with Adobe Spark. Are there any Adobe courses available for formal accreditation in Adobe? 
Yeah, formal accreditation happens through a, a partner we have called a, a called Certiport, and they run the accreditation for Microsoft and for us and for a range of other companies as well. So if you look up uh, the Adobe Certified Associate exams, or just look up Certiport, they'll have a whole lot of information on how to get formal certification in a number of Adobe products. What's a tip you would give to a high school student about achieving their goal with IT? Just to keep learning, keep an open mindset about things. Don't close yourself down. Don't say, oh, look, I can't, I can't, I can't. Think, I will try, I will try. Keep, keep thinking that you can and keep working at your skills and use YouTube, use all the resources that you have on the internet to help develop your skills. Even if your school isn't encouraging you, you've got so many other ways there of learning these days rather than just relying on a school or a formal education system. Yep, I think we have time for one final question. What is the best Adobe platform to use for design? Uh, well, the best Adobe app you mean? I'm not sure if you mean app or... Um, so it depends what you're wanting to design. So if it's a mobile app, Adobe XD. If it's a poster or a, uh, a flyer, then InDesign is, is brilliant. It's the industry standard for that. If it's a video, Premiere Pro. Uh, if it's a website, Dreamweaver. You know, you've got a whole lot of apps depending on what you are designing. And Geraldine, since that's the last question, that person who asked the very first question, I don't know if you can come back to that very first question about, uh, I think it was related to how can at, be at school and how can you develop those skills? What are the ways to get started with Adobe Business utilizing Adobe? No, that was the last question. Uh, yeah. The very first question, if we can find out who asked that very first question, because I didn't get a name associated with that. Uh, yeah. If that person can identify themselves, that'd be great. And um, Geraldine, did, did you want them to contact you or how are they going to reach out? Yep, so congratulations to our giveaway winner. Just please make sure to claim your awards by following steps sent by Calvin in the Q&A chat. So yeah, we'll do that for you. Terrific, I look forward to giving them a special prize. Thanks folks for the opportunity to present to you. Keep listening in to the next presenters because they're all got great insights from various other companies, all with a focus on IT, and I wish you all the very best for the future. Keep being creative.